Welcome to this tutorial on the CSA tool and toolkit, both of which are designed to help you prepare and maximise your success in the CSA or clinical skills component of the MRCGP exam. So during the session we'll give a little bit of background um, to the development of the tool across the northwest of England and we'll also consider the commonly asked questions, you know, why should we be using this tool and the toolkit um, who can use them and when, at what stage of training. We'll then briefly describe the CSA tool which consists of two parts and this will be followed by an outline of the toolkit. Finally, we'll do a brief description with an example of how to use the tool and the kit. So just starting with the background, um, the tool and the kit arose from considerable experience with resit doctors across the northwest of England, and this is since 2007 when the CSA started. So primarily there was a widespread desire for calibration, and this came about because um, both trainees and trainers were sometimes surprised by the results um, from the exam. And they felt that um, resits needed specific feedback in order to, in order to maximise their subsequent attempt success. And additionally, it also became clear that um, people wanted a generic assessment tool. So then moving on to why should we use the CSA tool for CSA preparation. The first compelling reason is that it was written by CSA examiners. And we are also um, research tutors and experienced GP educators in our own right. And we used our extensive experience of candidates, both successful and unsuccessful. We also used the RCGP CSA feedback statements, the domain and generic grade descriptors in order to write the tool. Secondly, it's a generic tool for all GP consultations. And trainers attending workshops have given the tool the ultimate accolade by saying to us repeatedly, we really like this tool because it describes what we actually do as GPs. This, of course, resonates very well with the assessment criteria in the CSA, which is a test for fitness for independent general practice in the UK. And thirdly, it's very adaptable, so it can be used for all levels of competence and stages of GP training, and also to assess progress towards readiness to sit in the CSA. And lastly, because we've used it now for three or four years, it's evidence-based. So finally, let's just move on to what the tool actually consists of. So it's in two parts, the CSA overview and the RAG rating descriptors, RAG being short for red, amber and green. So the part one or the CSA overview allows quick identification of problems within the 10 minute role play. The part two or RAG rating enables more detailed word descriptors of the behaviours. And the, the two together divide the CSA consultation into tasks and skills. So tasks, or what is done, correspond to the CSA domains of data gathering and clinical management, which are together responsible for two thirds of the marks. The skills, or how the tasks are performed, correspond to the CSA domain of interpersonal skills. Now in the CSA, the interpersonal skills actually only um, corresponds to a third of the marks. In our tool, you can see that it runs throughout the consultation. So just looking at the CSA overview in a bit more detail, we can see on the left we have the green boxes representing tasks. On the right we have purple lozenges for the interpersonal skills. Time is in pink on the far left and we can see that data gathering, including clinical examination, should be finished by five or six minutes to allow time for clinical management. So looking at the RAG descriptors, there's, there's quite a lot of factual information again here, but I think it's quite important to explain the structure and the outline of the RAG um, descriptors, just really so that you can use them to you know, maximise the, the um, effect of them. So they focus on specific parts of the consultation. <clears throat> the word descriptors are underpinned by exactly the same idea, so interpersonal skills allow the trainee to gather data and to do clinical management. 
So the green descriptors are incredibly important and they can also be used to um, help support doctors who actually are not confident that they're ready to sit the CSA. So you go through a consultation and you say, look, you know, all these word pictures actually describe what you're doing. So yes, you need to go and sit next week, preferably. And then the red side um, corresponds with areas that are done badly. So what I'd like to do now is just go through um, an example of how the tool and the RAG rating can be used with a particular aspect of the consultation. The tasks that need to be done within the consultation. Um, a box that says um, patient-centred management plan. And the patient-centred part of this phrase is actually highlighted in red. So if we have a trainee who's not providing a patient-centred management plan, we can trace the red line back up to the beginning part of the consultation and try and unpick a little bit as to why this might be. So if we go back up, that takes us to um, psychosocial information and ICE. And we see that maybe one of the reasons why they're not um, using that information is that they haven't listened to the patient well or they haven't responded to patient cues. Um, maybe they've elicited the ICE, but they don't use it later on. They don't incorporate it into their management plan. And this, this requires skills further down the overview, such as sharing of information with the patient or negotiating. So it may be that you, you get a trainee who presents a load of um, options, but actually doesn't make that meaningful to the patient in terms of their life and also their ideas, concerns and expectations. So then if we take that particular behaviour that we've um, identified, we can get a lot more detail with the word pictures from the RAG descriptors. So if we stick with the, um, the doctor who's not doing this well, and we look on the red side of the RAG descriptors, we get some really useful phrases. So we've got, does not involve the patient in a management plan, which may seem unrelated to patient preferences, which kind of describes in a little bit more long-winded way um, what I was alluding to before. As I say, really good information that you can, can get out in some qu it's quite a lot of detail really to help you to, to plan the next stage. Okay, so what do we do next? So we've got lots of information there um, and we've decided to focus on one particular aspect of um, the consulting and the tasks within the consultation. So we've done some analysis using the overview and the RAG rating and we need to also do a bit of formulating of developmental needs, if you like. So using both parts of the tool together, we can locate parts of the consultation that are missing. So in our example, it might be that the, the doctor just didn't find out what the patient's ice was. We can also um, use them to help identify and describe the problems that the training, trainee may be having with interpersonal skills. So we said it may just be that they didn't listen properly um, or they didn't use the previously expressed ice when they, were, they came to the management plan. And so both parts therefore really help us to identify specific behaviours that may need changing. So we can use this analysis to then um, come up with some developmental needs. So in our example it might be that the doctor needs to improve their listening skills or that they um, need to improve how they find out about ICE. They might also need to learn how to involve the patient in the management plan and not to collude with them, for example. So now we're in the great position of having analysed the consultation, formulated some developmental needs, so what the heck do we do about that? And that's where um, the toolkit comes in. It's a collection of strategies and the idea being to help the trainees with consultation problems based on huge experience from the training community. So going back to our example, we've identified that the patient's not involved in the management plan, so it's not patient-centred. And in the toolkit, there's really quite a lot of um, text to describe why this might be happening. And then the toolkit suggests some different methods of exploring this. So the trainee can do these on their own. So the trainee could maybe watch their own consultations and identify if this happens and why it happens. 
and then you need to drill down as the trainer into maybe possible reasons. So one reason may be, as we said before, that um, they don't listen properly. It may also be, actually, that there's a knowledge problem. So it might be that they were not really comprehensive in their generation of differential diagnosis. So they spent too much time doing that and didn't really get the psychosocial or the ICE. Um, and again, they may not be confident in their management options because of lack of knowledge. So it's important to remember that the CSA really, it's not just about testing consultation skills. Knowledge is 50% of it. And sometimes the tool and the overview actually identify more of a knowledge problem. The consulting is actually fine. But the great thing is that you can find out by using it. So finally, if we just summarise the stages um, to using both the tool and the, the toolkit and also some key points. So there's four stages to CSA preparation using the tool. So for, first of all, you need to find out what's going wrong, if anything is going wrong, and you use the overview and the RAG rating for some more detail. Then you come up with some developmental needs, things that need fixing, that need changing, and then how are you going to do that with the educational strategies. And then obviously it's a continuous process where you know, you'll have to practice changing the behaviour and then reviewing. And you can use the tool and the, um, the overview in particular to assess progress. So you know, often what we find is that when people start practising a particular skill, they move to the green word descriptors and they get a lot of satisfaction and confidence from that and confidence is really important especially if you fail the exam you know at least once you're feeling very nervous about going back and doing it again so you can see for yourself that actually you've moved to green and so you, that's going to give you more confidence so just to go over some final points the CSA tool and the, the kit can be used with trainees and trainers it's generic it's valid and it's evidence-based the toolkit is a collection of suggestions. It's constantly evolving. You know, we always like to hear of things that people have done that have really worked for them. And it's linked to specific developmental needs, but also to the CSA. So that can really help you to persuade the trainee that this is something really worth um, pursuing and using. Both of them can be used at any stage. And it describes desired behaviours as well as skills in addition to the unhelpful ones. And that's where we're looking at those trainees who are doing lots of practice at Christmas and not quite sure when they want to sit the CSA. And you know that they're absolutely going to fly through it and you can, you can um, consolidate that by looking at the overview and the rag raters and saying, you're green, you're good to go. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you find it useful. I know that you will. Um, and the best thing to do is to have a go and look at some consultations with it and send us as much feedback as you want. Thank you.